can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See lights like a beach if you find the same right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Devin Bate of SEOBrothers.co. And Devin, before I formally introduce you, I always like to point out other episodes people should check out of the podcast. This is going to be a great story because what's fascinating about Devin, I think is relatable, is both him and his brother had full-time jobs and they started this on the side and grew it so that they could be their their full-time thing. Um, I think I can relate to that. Um, many people I know in my universe, I can relate to that too. So we'll, we'll talk about the journey. Um, and the, the journey of White Label is, is pretty interesting too, um, as well. But check out the other episodes uh, we did. I did a few episodes with Jason Swank. Uh, Jason Swank grew his uh, agency to over eight figures and then sold it. And then uh, I did another episode about what he's doing more currently, um, where he's been buying up agencies and he has an agency group that he supports uh, to help grow agency owners. So check those out. Uh, Todd Tasky is also another good one, uh, especially in the agency series. Um, He basically pairs agencies with um, private equity and helps sell agencies. And he has the Second Bite podcast. Sometimes these agencies make more on the Second Bite than they do on the first because the private equity sells uh, again and they make more uh, with the rolled in percentage. So it's interesting how he thinks about um, valuations and selling companies and things like that. And I also did one with John Warlow. Speaking of selling companies, uh, he wrote Built to Sell. He's got the Built to Sell podcast. Check that one out as well. Really good. Uh, And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help Businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And how do we do that? We actually help a company run their podcast. We're an easy button for a company to launch and run a podcast. We do the full strategy, the accountability, and the full execution to make it easy. Um, You know, Devin, we call ourselves the magic elves that work in the background to make it look easy for the host um, and for the company so they can just run their business, develop relationships, and that's what they can focus in on, much like. Devin behind the scenes is basically helping fuel people's SEO uh, for their companies um, and with their clients. So the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationships. And I've found no better way over the past decade to profile the people in companies I most admire and share with the world what they're working on. So if you have thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com. We have a lot of free resources and you can email us at support at rise25.com. And I'm excited to introduce Devin Bate. He's the co-founder of SEO Brothers with his brother, Adam. Uh, they're a fully remote. It's funny, even back when it wasn't normal, they were fully remote. Um, and actually, when I was looking back at, I think it was a video, I don't know what it was, five years ago or something like that. You had all the team members on talking about where they were, were fully remote. Now, you know, after COVID especially, uh, that's a little bit more normal, but you've been doing this for, for many years now. Um, SEO Brothers specializes in white label SEO. They've helped over 100 agencies, all sizes, start, grow, and scale their SEO offering. And prior to SEO Brothers, Devin worked in finance and real estate consulting, and we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit. But Devin, thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. So I want you to take me back. We'll talk about, um, you know, SEO Brothers, and people can check it out at seobrothers.co um, and what you do there. But take me back, you and your brother, you're working full-time jobs, mm-hmm. and you decide to have a contest between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. So this would have been back in 2016, I believe. Um, I can take it back slightly one year further. We started in 2015. Um I was, Adam's actually seven years older than I am. So he had already sold uh, a web development company. I was branching out on his own, uh, convinced me to start this agency together. You know, SEO was what he was really enjoying. He was going to teach me. Let's dive in. Uh, He took a full-time job two weeks later after I quit my job. Um, I tried to run it a little bit solo. Uh, We can dive more into that as well, if you'd like. But uh, after about a year, came to realize, you know, maybe this should have started on the side instead of diving right in, didn't quite have the savings um, in order to carry uh, cost of living there. So 
I took a job in SEO, got really familiar, uh, multi-location. And then, you know, because it was on the side, we decided, um, let's start a new new brand. At the time, it was a, an agency in Latin. No one could ever pronounce it. It wasn't great. Um, so we started SEO Brothers. We we're going to do this together. Uh, it started as sort of a case study. Um, we we're just writing about SEO. You know, he was at an agency, so he couldn't really compete anymore. Um, but we decided to have a competition. Um, and at the time, I believe his was Vegan Life. Uh, he was recently vegan. Uh, and mine was Wine Life. Um, I had recently started taking a few of the WSET courses, uh, learning a fair bit more about wine, uh, certainly a different lifestyle. Um, but it was, you know, how can we each rank our sites? How can we monetize it? Uh, you know, is it subscription box style? Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, um, the exposure from our own SEO and SEO brothers started picking up. I was able to pick up some clients on the side, didn't really have time to you know, bring that to fruition. Uh, we have the domains. I think we just finally stopped paying for them this past year, six years later. Um, we've got way too many domains we were paying for. So it was time to to let that one go. But um, I think it would have been would have been really neat, but it was the, you know, we don't really have clients. How can we prove ourselves? How can we show if we're going to be SEO consultants, white label SEO, how can we show, you know, that we're capable, show off our skills before we get clients, but things started picking up before we got there. Um, so probably for the best, I guess. Yeah. So you were, I mean, showcasing what you were doing and you kind of publicly announced it. What do you, mm. what did you learn at that time? Um, Cause you know, ranking and monetizing, and it's a lot different, right? What you were doing, like a vegan life and wine life um, it's a lot harder to monetize something like that than like an actual business that can bring in clients and monetize, right? So that's that's very difficult to do. But what did you learn about ranking um, and monetizing at that time? Well, I mean, at that time we didn't we didn't really get to the monetizing phase. So the the learnings from that, unfortunately, you know, weren't there. Um, but from you know from a ranking perspective. You know, if, if we're getting into a little bit of the weeds of SEO, um, really having the opportunity to think through what the end game of the website was going to be, what is the structure, really think through the architecture there, mapping it out. Okay, I'm going to want someone to eventually search for this. That'll be sort of this silo of content. Um, taking the actual time to you know map it out, whiteboard, pen and paper, that kind of thing, mind map um, before even starting. That you know that was critical. It's a lot harder to to kind of break apart your website, move your content. You can do it, but it's it's much cleaner if you can set it up right the first time. Um, and you know, good siloed content. So I think uh, there's an image I used to use um, anytime I would do a presentation. It was kind of you look at a jar of Skittles with all the different colors in it versus you know five different jars each with their own color. It's so much more appealing to the eyes, um, but it, it really paints that picture of like good website siloing. Put the content where it should be, you know, a parent page, sub page, internal links, that kind of thing. So just not having you know endless say blogs being published without the actual intent behind what kind of content is this? Um, you know, a big difference back then, I guess, than now, though, is once you had decent enough content, um, you know, link building was a, while it's still a, a very big play today, you know, back then you could almost um, outlink bad content um, with powerful enough links, relevant enough links. Whereas, you know, now I think the, the, the change over time is content is so pivotal. Um, Google has gotten so much better at, you know, reading it, digesting it, figuring it out. It, you know, thin, bad content, unless you don't have any competition in the space, you know, that's just not, not the way it is anymore. Um, What's some uh, mistakes you see people make? Cause even on, uh, you have, again, help a lot of agencies. So you have a, a little bit broader perspective than just maybe, uh, an agency that's serving one niche, you kind of see it across a bunch of different niches. What are some mistakes people are making? Because probably people listening here have companies and they're wondering what what should I be doing or what should I not be doing? Yeah, I mean, from at least you know the mistakes that we see agencies make, say with clients, uh, it's really expectation setting 
out of the gate is probably the biggest mistake, especially if you're going to work with a white label provider like us. And if if we aren't aligned on what you sold your client, and then you come and buy the solution from us, and and there isn't that collaboration on, are they actually expecting what we're providing as it comes through you? Um, so I think that's a big one, just aligning on, do well, do they understand what SEO is, you know, long-term strategy, and are they like what is their priority? Is it phone calls and booked appointments? You know, if it's a dentist, do they just want butts and seats? Or, you know, sometimes we've worked with clients um, mostly out west, back sort of mm, oil and gas industry. Um, a lot of it was just, I see my competitor ranking for this. I want to be ahead of them. I don't care if they're search volume, I'm willing to pay to beat them. And so that, I mean, that's a very different strategy, but it it aligned with what the client wanted. And if that's for some reason, if that's what he wanted to pay for, that we can deliver on that. So just being crystal clear before you before you sell your client, again, especially if you're working with a, you know, even an internal team, um, to make sure we're all aligned that this is what we're actually going to deliver. That's a good point with the expectations, especially with SEO, right? How do you recommend because you're coaching your clients too, and educating them on how to best go back and and sell this sometimes, right? Mm. What do you tell them? Because to say, hey, this is a long-term strategy. This could take whatever, six months, a year, depending on the the term that people are trying to rank for. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they're getting from their clients, well, how quickly are we going to see results? How do you tell them to navigate this setting expectation conversation. Yeah, well, and that's where it gets a little little messy. You know, I need to have a good relationship with our agency partner to understand um what their what their in-house capabilities are to make sure, you know, what I'm coaching aligns. Um but like really in terms of how we help them say sell SEO um, really, the, you know, the term investment, I feel like gets thrown around a lot. Um, you know, paid ads, it's like a faucet. You can turn it on, pay for that click, you get that lead. Whereas you're actually investing in your website. You're adding content to your website. You're cleaning up the structure of your website. You're getting links and building domain authority for your website. So it very much is a longer term strategy, like an investment. Likewise, you know, uh, ideally over long term, you see those returns in, say, an investment portfolio, but you'll also see some drops along the way, right? The idea is to be trending upward, but there will be peaks and valleys as we get there. Um, so setting that up ahead of time, that this isn't a linear, I want month over month over month over month growth. Um, that is, that's a big one. And another one, I guess, with SEO is that we're also not demand generating in this. So it, you know, if you're in a market and they're just, you know, especially if you're locally constrained and you're in rural Newfoundland in Canada and there's 2000 people and you're a dentist, then if you're number one, even if you had five sites and you were number one, two, three, four, five, there's only so many people looking for a dent. Like, I, we can't create demand. So we've had for some reason, and that's a little bit more obvious, but there are certain circumstances where clients just forever expect growth uh, as if more people are all of a sudden going to be searching for them. So it, it's more about capturing that demand uh, is another big part of it as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, you can't create demand. But yeah. I like the metaphor of the investment portfolio. Uh, that's that's a good one um, because I can see how that follows. Yeah, we are investing, but also it's not going to just keep growing. Like the stock market could drop and then you know come back up. It's a long term mm. investment. What are also yeah. what are some of the biggest objections that that you or your partners get, and then how do you recommend handling them? I think, you know, price in our industry is probably the biggest pushback. Hey, I can go to Fiverr and get this for $49. Why do I need to spend X amount of money? Um, you know, and a big part for us, you know, it's customer service that sets that apart. Um, but really the, the agency 
like supporting the agency in building what their value proposition is. So, you know, for us, we are the service providers, we're doing the SEO, um, but you know, what sets them apart versus another agency we work with where we do the SEO uh, to try and help them add their value to the relationship. Um, and, you know, it. some clients just, they're purely price driven. And uh, a lot of the times we've seen, they say, no, thank you. And a year later, they come back and like, I didn't get anything from it. Maybe I'm, I'm ready to take this a bit more seriously. Um, but the the collaboration and the trying to understand you know, a business's priorities and objectives versus just, I'd like to buy content links, that kind of thing as well. So it, um, I'd say, yeah, the, why, why are you more expensive is probably the, the biggest pushback agencies will get. Are there, are there any other ways that you recommend your partners explain that or go about that of handling the price objection? What else have you seen work? Yeah, I mean, it depends on their offering. Um, so a lot of our agencies handle the, they're, you know, they're almost more, they, they kind of weasel their way into like business consulting, you know, marketing consulting, like I like set them up to really understand the, the business. Um, whereas some of the you know low cost providers it is it's deliverable right it's i spend this much and i'll give you x y and z no promises no commitment i'm just going to give you the work so helping them you know demonstrate to their client that they're the ones leading the strategy like getting to know their business pulling that information out of them and and making sure we're doing the right things and if it doesn't work we have strategies to pivot and adjust as needed versus, you know, where do like what what now? Where do I go from here? Um, so it, it's you know it's more it's very much relationship driven. I would say at that point um, with a lot of our agencies. So make sure that there's a specific strategy. Make sure that that the that you demonstrate the value, and then you're willing to pivot if that is not working. Mm, yeah. Right. Um. And go ahead. And really, um, you know, with with our you know partners and and clients um, on price, uh, and I think you know you hear this maybe in real estate, lots of other industries. You know, there's like the triangle um, of budget, results, and timeline. Uh, and so it's you know if you want a, a lower budget, and you still expect results in a year then like the results aren't going to be as good, right? Like each one impacts the other. So it's, you pay $49 and if you expect results in 10 years, like they still might not be very good because your competitors might outspend you in general, but you know, it one needs to give for the other. So that's what we try and do it as well. So sometimes, you know, we'll get pushback. Hey, this was a, the client might've quoted, it was $1,500 a month plan. Hey, like, can we do it for a thousand? She's like, okay, well, this was a 12 month plan. Are you prepared to do it over 18 months? You know, same sort of outcome, but it'll, it'll help your cash flow. but you're basically spending the same amount of money um, at the end of it. So it's, you know, how can we, we know the pieces that we need to do. You said, these are the priorities. You said, you know, that's going to need this content, these links, your technical SEO, maybe, you know, needs a bit of a cleanup. Um, how, you know, how aggressive do you want to be in rolling some of this out? So it's almost more like financing a project um, over a longer period is, is also another way to still deliver the same value, um, but just, but just bring it out a little bit longer. Yeah, it kind of goes back to what you said in the beginning, which is it's all about, you know, setting the expectations because that's really yeah, expectations. Yeah. It's yeah. really, well, if you want to spend this, here's what you should expect to get. Yeah, for yeah, this, yeah. Right. What's another objection that's a common objection that you see? So price is one. What's another? Um, just is, uh, isn't SEO dead? Uh, I guess it'd be a pretty common one that I think we've heard for, well, 10, forever. Uh, I feel like any big update that comes out, 
uh, someone's website collapses and they're just, they've given up on the whole idea of investing, um, investing in SEO. And, and really, you know, you know, the way we position it is that it's, it's harder to, to spam, you know, there's no, um, mass link building from foreign countries that you can dump at your website with your content, you know, buried in white space like that, you know, when that disappeared, there was a whole group of people that then didn't know how to serve it. Um, so it's more just the, the strategies are changing, but really it's what, it's what search engines have always wanted. They've just gotten better at doing it. Um, so if you, you know, if you take the strategy of let's, let's make you an authority in your space, let's build out good content, like your point of view, your perspective, let's get links from other websites. And it's just, it's just harder to do, um, which means it's all that more important to work with a reputable agency uh, or white label provider um, than it is to just buy from wherever and and hope for the best. Yeah. The the reason I, I this is interesting is like this applies to all industries. Whoever's listening to this, whatever company it is, I'm sure they're going to get some variation of this price is is blank dead whatever they're mm. doing. Like it could be a web developer. Like wait, do I really need this fancy website? Isn't this point whatever it is? Yeah, so I can just build it on and, Wix myself. And, and like you, right? So um, these objections are are pretty universal, you know. And like you said, so that's a good way of handling it. It's, it's harder to game the system now. So the people who do it are going to have an advantage, right? Mm -hmm. And actually invest in it. What's another? So we have price isn't SEO dead. What's another common objection that? you or your partners get? You know, I would, I don't know if it's necessarily um, an objection, but something clients, some clients push for uh, is almost like a, a guarantee of results um, that, you know, we never advise to do that. I know I've worked, you know, worked with companies that say like, if we don't get you, you know, to X, Y, or Z by a certain date, you have your money back. Um, and maybe there's a place for that. That's certainly not what we advise you know, our agency partners to do. Um, and, you know, it's it's a balance, but it is marketing. You know, we're not as someone, I think their argument to me is when I take my car into the mechanic, I don't want to pay him. And he'd be like, I might be able to fix your car. Like, come back later and we'll find <laughs> out, right. um, which is a fair point. But, you know, different industry, uh, different expectations there. So it really, I, you know, at the end of the day, we also shouldn't be in business if we aren't confident in our work. So it is a, based on the information we know now, we can expect an outcome by, you know, basic 12 months, 18 months, six months, you know, depending on what their actual budget is um, of this. But no, never a guarantee because you never know what new competitor that comes in with some venture back funding and all of a sudden got really aggressive with their, their SEO strategy. So it, you can't, you know, you can't predict what other parties are going to do. And, and that's, that's SEO, right? That if someone else all of a sudden comes in, then our work that given that what we knew at the time might have been enough, but now that there are more people involved, the strategy is changing. Um, so really it's, it's the, we always start, you know, we tell our clients, we'll just start with a discovery audit, right? We'll, we'll show you that we're capable of, you know, finding things on your website, making some recommendations. Um, some even recently have started with maybe a three month project commitment to kind of get over that fear of like, am I just going to pay for this forever? Like, is this going to be a line item that never goes away? Um, and then, and then when you see results and you're happy with it, we can go from there. So it, yeah, that would, that would probably be. The it's other it's an interesting that. conversation. Devin, because, you know, really what the client's asking is they just want to diminish their risk, right? Yeah. And so how are ways companies, you've seen companies do a little, little bit of a risk reversal, not necessarily a guarantee, but a risk reversal. And I see on one hand, you know, someone, a company's talking about the value they provide. Like we just, like you said, the strategy is to get you calls or appointments. Mm then the expectation is, okay, like our goal is to get you calls or appointments as opposed to selling the features, which 
is also not a great way of selling like, oh, we'll do X number of articles. We'll do X number of links. You know, mm. we could, you can guarantee those things, but then that's yeah. still not talking about the outcome is what the person cares about. So how do you navigate the, okay, selling the benefits and, and the features there? Yeah, I mean, you you definitely... In SEO, you do need both because, you know, if there is a down month, because, and, you know, especially busy business owners, they have, they have a website, you're doing stuff on it. Most of them don't even read the content. Like they don't, they don't really know. So if results are down, they need some sort of like, are, have you, have you been doing any work? Like I need proof you are doing something, right? That's always, so, you know, we have deliverables that are for our partner that they can share with the client. We try to be as transparent as possible because there is that, are you do like, what are you even doing? So that like the, the features while not necessarily great for the sale are critical to just show because there are so many, not so many, there are companies out there that, you know, sign people up for an SEO program. Maybe they optimize a couple page titles in Yoast and then they're just it's just a monthly fee and they're not really delivering any ongoing value so that that piece is still very important um but from the you know the benefit side um we try to relate it to what their industry is so using that you know dentist as an example you know what you know most dentists will know what is the average even annual value of a new patient maybe it's $600 for a patient um and how you know how many calls and really i guess looking at you know search volume in their market so if there are 100 people searching a month and you know if we can get you to position 1 maybe that's 30% of those 100 people will visit your website uh, ideally it's it's going to be much better if they're a business that has an existing website has you know maybe google analytics or some sort of tracking already so that we can look at, you know, you seem to be converting at this percentage. Um, there is this opportunity in search volume. We're confident we can get you here by 12 months, which means this many more calls, which then means this many more patients and this much more money. And that's a positive ROI for you. So it, it, it can get a little cumbersome because uh, unfortunately there are a lot of businesses that don't have that information, yeah. uh, especially smaller local businesses. They don't always have a great way of tracking that. Um, and some of our agencies have actually almost become more uh, operational consultants as they move further. Like, okay, you say it's not working. We see conversions. Let's set up call tracking. Okay. I Now it's almost, I'm listening to the phone. Uh, you're actually, you, t you never answer it on time or so-and-so is rude. Uh, and then it's like, you know, we can't, we can't close the business for you. And then they get into offering some of that. So it, you know, some of that can happen certainly along the way as well. Uh, we obviously stay out of that side. That's what that's how the agency sees they can start providing more value, working with at least some of the smaller local businesses. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of moving pieces with this. Yeah. And it's like, even like you said, let's say you do exactly what you say and you get people hitting to the page and they call and then no one answers the phone. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So like everything that everyone's worked for at that point, falls to the wayside. Yeah. So yeah. It, from what you're saying, it sounds like communication, education of the clients are key. You know, the expectations are key. Communication, mm. education are key. Because if you're communicating, like you said, let's say the dentist gets an uh, implant client, like after month six, that could pay mm. for you for, for three years. Yeah. But the client sometimes thinking, what have you done for me lately? Right. And so yeah. the next month, nothing the next month mm. nothing but if if the partner or you educate the client be like this paid for us for yeah. three years then they're still probably thinking what have you done for me lately but it, it helps <laughs> yeah a little bit on that education and communication standpoint it does it does and bigger businesses we've worked with seemed like like i mentioned we a while ago sort of western canada energy sector they understood like i'll pay for this for two years if i get one client out of it you know that pays for five more years of this so it some of some of them certainly do um but it, it's more being able to show this actually came from our work i guess at the end of the day that's the important part not just i think they just would have called anyway i thought this was a referral or something like that but. That kind of goes into, you know, so setting expectations, communication, education. Another one that 
you it seems that you just mentioned is choosing the right clients, right? Like a client yeah. that actually has the right expectations to start with. Talk yeah. about that for a second. Who's who's ideal clients for you they, or who's not? Who have you found they don't come in with realistic expectations? They, you know, want it done yesterday, et cetera. Yeah. Well, I mean, so our, you know, our clients, if that's being the the agencies that we work with, um, working with niched agencies is certainly the best client for us. Um, they've usually, it means there's, there's intention, there's, you know, um, a good sales process that's consistent. They're building a reputation in their industry. And, and you see more of that adding services to, to help show the success. You know, I, I mentioned like call tracking and dentists, you know, we work with a, a big partner in the U S that, you know, because they do dentists, they, you know, they always set up the, the scheduling software, the call tracking software, so they can just get really good at understanding their market. Uh, and so we can plug in the SEO piece and it's much easier for them to quickly show that success versus trying to, you know, build that all from, from scratch. Um, I would say, yeah, that, that would be, yeah, that's our ideal our our deal partner uh, and so we always recommend for all of our our agencies to you know if if they can and if they're open to it to to niche into something that makes sense for them it just makes it it makes it a lot easier especially in the white label we can really work on a consistent solution we can get our costs down hey we've noticed you know doing this that you know it is kind of almost then a a built for them productized service you know, most of the time when we do these, it works consistently. And so you can sell it without getting a proposal every time from us. You can, you know what results to expect and, and we can just scale together like that. I'm curious, um, you know, Devin, if there's cases where that makes sense, right? Specializing, niching, and this is a constant conversation. I'm sure I've heard a lot of agencies mm. have internally, but then sometimes they're fearful, like, well, we're neglecting this other business, right? Mm -hmm. If we fully go all in on, you know, I'm looking, if you're looking at, if you're listening to the audio, you can see we are looking at the video. We are looking at seobrothers.co and the industries. Like, you know what? Um, cardiology, right? Like 30% of their clients are cardiology, whatever. And mm. the 70 percent is not, they're worried. I'm sure you've heard this a million times. They're worried, well, are we going to neglect this? Have you found cases where you're you're working through this process? Because I'm sure with your onboarding, and we'll talk about your client onboarding a little bit, that you almost have to do a discovery on where to focus. Have you done discoveries where a agency actually kind of discovered through your discovery with them that they should be niching into a specific industry? Uh, a little bit, especially in the the early years. Um, and and more so if they've also got other services. So a big, you know, a big type of partner we work with, they generally do say paid ads in-house um, and then outsource the SEO. And so, you know, any any industry that maybe we've seen come through where it's very complimentary, uh, there was one that was in the HVAC space where you know, paid ads were excellent for all of the emergency keywords. Uh, and then, then we were really good for the you know, researching big major furnace purchase, that kind of thing in tandem. So, it, it, you know, it, it comes down a little bit to what they offer. Um, but you can, you know, we can see it when we we used to look at, you know, our top 10 partners by revenue, nine out of 10 of them were niched. Um, and it just, it was, you know, it was a no brainer that they were just able to build processes and scale accordingly. And I, I you definitely get the, that, you know, that scares me. It's, and in the early stages, maybe there is more trying and like, don't, you don't have to decide necessarily right away um, until you find, you know, what you're really good at. But, um, you know, we do get, yeah, we get that pushback, pushback a lot. Yeah, no, but there's a lot of articles. So if this happens to be in your specific space, you can check out um, their industries page. You can see that, you know, I guess they eat their own dog food because they have a different article for each of these niches, right? So yeah. if you are a med spa, if you are uh, here's to create a perfect franchise, uh, uh, so SEO solution, 
We have cosmetic surgeons. We have on and on and on auto repair mm -hmm. shops. Um, talk about the client experience. Um, I know that's something you've focused on throughout the years and even now. How what have you found is the best uh walk through your onboarding and client experience? Yeah, I mean, we're always looking for the best. Um, always looking to get better, right? And it's changed a lot over the years. I would say just the the client experience in general uh, mm -hmm. is what has set us apart and helped us see our success because especially in the white label and I might have mentioned this earlier you know there can be a lot of resellers where you know an agency just goes and I need 10 pieces of content and I need five links and it's kind of just self-managed that way uh, whereas we really do try to be a partner for the agencies that we work with and and we also want to make sure we aren't wasting each other's time before we come in and offer a lot of our complimentary support on top if it's not going to actually work out. So, um, you know, the to start things off, we do a demo with our sales team. Good fit. Do we like each other? Um, do the, you know, culture deck, do things align? This is what we do. This is, this is you know, how you would work with us. Here's our, you know, portal, that kind of thing. Uh, if they want to move on to the next stage, Usually they've come to us because there is a current need. Um, so they might submit a discovery audit. We'd walk them through what it would be like for them to onboard their first campaign, I guess, in that process as well. Um, so they can get a sense of that flow, you know, emails, delivery, documents, what do things look like with something a little bit more relevant than just samples. And from there, we look at signing a master service agreement. So we look to to work together for a year. Um, obviously, you know they can terminate if the relationship doesn't work out. But we like that soft commitment because sometimes it can it can be like I really like you guys. I'll I'll see you when I have a paying client. Um, so it's just another way to to get that engagement from them. And from there, we do a big, you know, meet the team call. So me, you know, the director of client experience, who's going to be your project manager, who's going to be your account manager, get familiar with some of the faces. You know, we are fully remote. So it's going to be a Zoom or Google Meet call. Um, we'll then, you know, introduce each other, really just more of relationship building before we get into to client work. Um, after that, um, we're in the process of developing like a, a new client or a new partner package. Uh, so it comes with all of the things that they've probably been demoed all already. Um, but obviously you, know, you quickly forget, you know, what, what you've seen in a, in a presentation. So nicely packaging anything that's relevant to them. Hey, when you onboard a client, make sure you get Google analytics, if it's local Google business and, and some of that housekeeping as well. Um, and that's, that's really the, the onboarding a partner. And then obviously there's the additional layer of onboarding their campaigns as they come in as well. Talk about that for a second. So you've kind of walked them through, educated them. Um, and now you need to, they're like, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's do it. Devin, what happens next? Yeah. And you know, it, it depends on what they're coming to us with. Some have a book of business that they want to bring over because they're not happy with their last provider. That's usually more of a custom like, hey, this was my budget. This is what we were doing. How can we make this fit? And, you know, that's kind of a separate conversation to, to onboard an existing book. But, you know, if they were coming fresh or just slowly bringing on new clients, we always ask them to submit a discovery um, or, you know, discovery and proposal, depending on how early in the sales stage they, they are in. And that involves, we look at their, you know, their business priorities, if they have a sense of that already. Um, if it's more of a cold discovery, then, you know, we'll just look at um, some of the keywords that they already rank for, uh, what positions they're in, who are they up against in terms of competition, what does their technical structure look like, you know, how would we approach this campaign? Uh, and then we typically would provide a couple of options. So, you know, maybe it's if they, you know, if you're a wellness clinic, you've got lots of different services, you've got Cairo, you've got massage, you've got physiotherapy, right? If, if you want to focus on, say, all five of your core services, that means, you know, we at least need five to 10 pieces of content per month, we need, you know, that many more links, it's going to be this budget to, 
to get you these results in say a year. Or, you know, if you if you don't want to spend that much, maybe you just want to focus on one or two of your most profitable. So let's say let's focus on Cairo and massage. Um, so it's going to be less content, you know, fewer links. That'll be a smaller budget to get those services there. So it, it's giving, trying to give a few different options for pricing, but still being about delivering that value. It's just, you know, how how much do they have, I guess, on their website? How many things do they do as well? So that that's, sorry, go ahead. That's helpful. Yeah, Devin. And, and again, I'm, I'm on the SEObrothers.co site and, um, you know, I'm on the uh, packages page. So you can, yep. you can check out what, what they have going on here, but um, I'm curious on pricing. How do you, and, and this is current in time we're looking at, this could change. Yeah. They could raise their prices. So just if you watch this, <laughs> Five years from now, you know, don't ask Devin, oh, mm. why can you give me that old pricing? Mm. But um, talk about pricing uh, and how you came up with pricing because you are keeping, a, you've taken account, okay, I'm white label. So mm. my clients have to go and sell this. So yeah. you have to strike a balance there. We do. You know, we're at, in the white label space, you're at a slight disadvantage of not really being able to price at value, right? Value-based pricing, when someone else then has to mark it up, is much harder to do. Um, so we do a lot more cost-based pricing, which is unfortunate, but it's the reality of the industry. And we actually just overhauled our pricing structure a little bit to make our managed campaign um, more of a managed campaign. And so what I mean by that is the way our ongoing campaigns work, unless you're a, you know, we, we've we got a, you know, partner with 90 locations and it's a scalable, very specific, like I mentioned before, you know, we build custom solutions. If you're an agency that's hyper niched and you want to grow that way um, for, you know, smaller to medium sized agencies, our managed campaign, it's really a $500 you know, pay to play fee, base fee um, with a hundred dollars of, you know, we almost say it like SEO spend. So for instance, the, the $500 that, that gets you your reporting, that gets you your monthly, you know, agency analytics crawl, search console check, uh, a base amount of link building, uh, project management time, account management time, that kind of thing. So just to run the campaign and then it, it scales up, but it starts with a hundred dollars. And this is sort of how we base our recommendations. So, you know, if we feel you have lots of services, you voiced, you you want to be aggressive, then, you know, we price in, it's basically a, a fixed, uh, I'll just use an example, maybe say $50 per piece of content. So if we feel you need four pieces of content, then that's going to be an extra $200 of, of budget that your SEO strategy strategist will manage over time. So the way we look at it is it's not necessarily a fixed scope. It's say a range of two to six pieces of content and maybe two to eight links. Uh, but based on, on a quarterly basis, what we feel is the next, you know, in your best interest, the next best thing for your website this quarter, maybe we need more content early on uh, and fewer links while we build out more of a site structure for you. Uh, and then as we progress into future quarters, maybe that mix changes a little bit as well. Uh, obviously, you know, Google business and, and local plays into that, but that's, it's kind of like a $500 for a strategist to manage your SEO spend. And that scales up based on how many pieces or components we call them of SEO. We think your website needs in that discovery process. Um, and then self-managed is basically you don't get the strategist overseeing it. These are for, they're usually agencies with in-house SEO already that are more of the, you know, like it's pretty low competition. They could just use some link building, some technical cleanup. I know what I'm doing. You get your reports, but you don't get the, why isn't this performing? What's happening here? You kind of have to know what you're ordering. Um, that we package as a campaign instead of necessarily, you know, a la carte content links, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, if they say, why, well, you know, why isn't this performing? It's, we'll move, you know, you don't have enough budget. Let's move to a managed campaign and we can lead the, the strategy there. Yeah. No, thanks for walking through that. And then I'm sure you get all over the place, but do you have a recommendation on how much should your clients sell things for? 
right? Like, yeah, I, I'm thinking I can kind of compare it to, you know, retail, right? If someone's in a grocery store, I don't, I don't know the actual metrics, but let's say they're selling to the grocery store for, you know, $3 and the grocery store is going to sell it for six. They want a hundred percent markup or whatever yeah. it is. So what do you recommend as far as pricing goes for your clients? Uh, we generally recommend a hundred percent markup. Um, there are certain industries that maybe you you can't get away with that. There are some industries where the value is just outrageous and they're five times as much. Um, but it also depends on the value that they are showing up with as well. So like I mentioned, the, the dental example, you know, if the, if the call tracking and patient booking and all of that kind of gets bundled into it, you know, the, the value, like, it's probably going to actually get marked up a fair bit more because it it all seems even more valuable. Um, but we we always shoot for like fifty percent is our like is the cost. Um, and so the you know the early days and I see a picture of uh, Jeff and Matt there from from Rocket Barn like that was that was it. It was you go out and like every quote I'm going to give you um, is fifty percent you know cost of retail pricing. Um, so th that is you know that has carried forward. That is what we try to. Yeah, to encourage our agency partners to to sell for. Talk about Rocket Barn. Yeah, great. Yeah, great company. It's actually Matt. Matt recently bought out Jeff, so it's it's just Matt now. But uh, they found us when I was living in Waterloo, Ontario, uh, in Canada, about six years ago. Uh, we ranked for a Waterloo SEO term, uh, so our own organic uh, helped us get found by by these two. Um, they. You know, they've gone through a lot of iterations themselves. Um, they always knew that they were going to be in the um, sort of niched dealer network space. So some of the initial projects we worked with were um, basically co-op funded HVAC. So American Standards got a marketing budget. So, you know, local reps can can run marketing campaigns at 20% the actual cost. The rest is, is co-op funded. And so that was kind of how we got in with them. Um, and really it was the service layered on, on top. And, and we didn't have too many clients at the time. So I had, I had more time, you know, I had no children yet. I was, I was out there hustling with these guys in the early days to, to try and help them sell. And, and we just started growing the, the book of business with them. So, you know, this is really where the, the client experience side um, that I, I see paid off for us in the early days. Um, and now they specialize in franchise SEO. So we support building out those, you know, you know, scalable solutions that they can sell, you know, time and time again. Um, David, first of all, thank you. I have one last question before I yeah. ask it. Um, I want to point people, check out seobrothers.co to learn more and more episodes of the podcast. Um, last question is, is just mentors um, in your, your agency journey. And it could be, you know, specific mentors or it could be distant mentors, maybe uh, a book or another other resources that, mm. that you like. Yeah, I mean, two come to mind. Obviously, um, you know, my brother, Adam, he's got seven years on me. Uh, he mentored me through all of the the technical, like the the actual SEO side of things. Uh, my background, I studied finance, dabbled in real estate. So, you know, the the industry knowledge really came from him. Um, I guess to take it back to, um, you know, maybe a book. I haven't really recently read as many business slash agency books. Built to Sell is a great one. Um, but um, Jocko Willink's like Extreme Ownership and Leadership Strategy and Tactics, more on like the, the leadership and personal development side. Um, you know, I've, I've reread those many times as we've grown a team. You know, it was one thing to go out, you know, be friendly, build relationships with clients, sell SEO, deliver work. But, you know, all of a sudden you start growing and a team gets building, you know, I, I, that that skill was never really practiced. And, and so I, I turned to those two were, yeah, really great books that I've listened to a, a few times over. Awesome. Everyone check out more episodes of the podcast, seobrothers.co. Devin, thanks so much. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. What I got. It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand